Hello everyone and welcome to edupediaworld.com. Today we will continue with the unit 2 of chapter 1 describing the various accounting concepts followed while preparing the financial statements. In today's class we will be doing the concept of going concern, historical cost concept and realization concept. Also we will do a very important concept of dual aspect concept the concept on which the basic of accounting is based. So let us start today's class with the first concept of going concern. Going concern concept. What does this concept say? It says that the financial statements of any company are normally prepared on the assumption that an enterprise is a going concern and will continue in operations for the foreseeable future meaning that we assume that any business that we have started will be a going concern that is it will continue year after year for a foreseeable future we do not assume that any enterprise that we are starting or any business that we are starting will shut down in the next year or in two years or three years Though it may shut down, but we prepare the accounting statements and financial statements on the basis of this concept that is going concern, meaning that the operation of the business will continue for a foreseeable future. Hence, it is assumed that the enterprise has neither the intention nor the need to liquidate or curtail materially the scale of its operation. We assume that any business which we have started we do not intend to liquidate that business or shut that business or reduce the scale of operations of that business. This is what we assume while applying this going concern concept. The valuation of assets of a business entity is dependent on this assumption. Mainly because if we follow this going concern concept, then we value the assets as per their cost. But if we assume that the business is not going to continue and we do not follow this concept of going concern, then we have to value the assets of the business at their market value or net realizable value, whatever it will realize in the market when we sell it. So this is the major reason of this concept to value the assets of a business entity on its cost rather than its market value. This going concern concept is one of the fundamental accounting assumption which we follow while preparing the accounting statements. There are three fundamental accounting assumptions which we have to follow while preparing any accounting statement or financial statements. These three concepts are the underlying concepts of the preparation of the financial statements and we do not have to mention in the financial statements that we have followed these concepts. It is assumed that these concepts are automatically followed. What are they? This is one going concern. Number two is consistency which we have done in the previous class and number three is accrual which we will do further. So these three are the fundamental accounting assumptions on which the accounting of any business is based. So this is one of the fundamental accounting assumptions. It is very important because it forms the basis of accounting of any enterprise. We have to first of all assume that a business is going concerned before accounting for any of its transactions. The next concept is the cost concept or we can say the historical cost concept. This is a very easy concept. It just says that whatever assets that we are showing in the balance sheet of our business is shown at the cost of purchase and not at current value. Whatever assets we are just owning, for example, the machineries, the furnitures, etc., whatever we are owning, we show it in the balance sheet at the cost of purchase, that is the historical cost and not at the current value. For example, any machinery which I have purchased four years back at a price of rupees 2 lakh should be shown in the balance sheet at the cost of 2 lakh only, though the current value of that machinery today is rupees 10 lakh. But we will not show in the balance sheet the value as 10 lakh, but we will show it 
at the value of purchase at what per price we purchase that machinery that is only shown in the balance sheet and reflected in the balance sheet and not the current value this is what this concept of historical cost says all the assets are shown at the cost of purchase and not at the current value next comes the realization concept what is the meaning of realization concept this concept closely follows the cost concept we have studied in the cost concept that all the assets are shown in the balance sheet at the cost of purchase and not at the current value now this concept is closely related with the cost concept how let us see any change in value of an asset is to be recorded only when the business realizes it so in the cost concept we studied that we do not record the assets at the current market value rather than we record it in the books of accounts at the cost of purchase so the same thing the realization concept says in a different manner it is saying that whatever change in the value of asset is there is only recorded when the business realizes it and how and when the business will realize the change in value of the asset when the asset is sold so until and unless the business is possessing the asset it will be shown in the balance sheet at the cost price only and not at the value at which it can be sold or the realizable value of that asset so when an asset is recorded at its historical cost of rupees 5 lakh and if its current cost is rupees 15 lakh such change is not counted unless there is certainty that such change will materialize so realization concept and cost concept are more or less similar the cost concept says that the assets are recorded at the cost of purchase and not at the current value and the realization concept says that any change in the asset is recorded only and only when the change will materialize that is when we will sell that asset so we cannot record for the change in value of the asset for example here the change is rupees 10 lakh 15 lakhs minus 5 lakhs we cannot record this 10 lakh rupees until and unless the change will materialize that is we will sell it and we will realize that gain of rupees 10 lakh that change of rupees 10 lakh so this is what the realization concept says that any change in the value of asset can be recorded only when the business realizes it until and unless the business realizes it the assets have to be recorded in the balance sheet at the cost historical cost only now comes the dual aspect concept this is a very 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 important concept with respect to accounting because accounting is wholly based on this concept that is the dual aspect concept as we proceed further with our syllabus and with our chapters we will realize that accounting is only dual entry dual aspect that is every transaction or event affects two accounts one is debit and one is credit so whatever transaction we are entering into or whatever event is taking place in our business that will have two dual dual impact on our accounting books one will increase something one will decrease something one will get debited one will get credited we'll further study about these rules of debit and credit as we go on and study journal entries but for now on we just need to know that whatever transaction we are entering into in our business that will have a dual impact on the books of account that is we have to record that transaction at two places one will increase and one will decrease one will get debited and one will get credited so let us see few examples to understand this dual aspect in more detail number one is what happens this is these are the cases these lines in red are the cases what happens and the lines in blue are the examples of those cases the first case is increases one asset and decreases the other asset 
how this happens simultaneously in one transaction how this can happen that is one asset is being increased and the other asset is being decreased so the example is a new machine is purchased paying 50000 in cash so what is happening in this transaction a machine is being purchased by paying cash of rupees 50000 so the asset machinery is increasing and the asset cash is decreasing so what is happening one transaction is affecting two assets one is getting increased and one is, one is getting decreased so this is how the dual aspect works every transaction will have two effects whether on assets or liabilities or both assets or both liabilities whatever may be the case but it has to affect two accounts and two entries let's take the second case increase an asset and simultaneously increases a liability so how this case will come into play what transaction will make this case a reality example is a new machine is purchased for 50000 on credit cash is to be paid later on whatever we purchase on credit that means we have to pay cash later on so we are purchasing a machine for 50000 on credit meaning we are just making the seller whoever is selling that machine our creditor the seller of the machine is our creditor and we have we owe some money to him and we have to pay him back at some later date so that creates a liability the creditor is our liability it is our liability to pay back to the seller of the machine the fixed amount at some later date so what is happening in this transaction the asset is increasing that is the machine that is increasing our asset and simultaneously the seller of the machine to whom we have to pay 50000 that is increasing our liability so what is happening one side an asset is increasing and one side the liability is increasing so simultaneously two accounts are being affected third case is one asset decreases and one liability decreases so what is the example of that cash paid to repay bank loan to the extent of 50000 we had initially suppose availed a loan of rupees 50000 from the bank and now we are paying back that money to the bank so what will happen we are paying money we are paying cash so our asset is decreasing so cash is decreasing and we are paying back to the bank and our liability is also decreasing the loan that we had availed is now being written off because we are paying back so the liability is also decreasing so as one asset is decreasing that is cash and one liability is decreasing that is bank loan so this shows these cases shows that every transaction will affect two accounts whether it be an asset two assets at the same time one asset one liability or two liabilities at the same time whatever may be the case but it has to anyhow affect two accounts so this also helps us in checking whether we are doing the right entry or not we have to enter any transaction in two accounts it cannot happen that we are entering only in one account for any transaction it means we are going wrong so you have to cross check that whether we have entered the transaction in two accounts or not until and unless we enter it in two accounts our entry will not be complete because accounting is solely a double entry process every transaction will affect two accounts in our business so these are the cases let's see some more cases of dual aspect how transaction affects assets and liabilities in this slide we can see that if only assets are being affected by any transaction then it will happen that one asset will increase and one asset will decrease vice versa one increase one decrease but if the transaction is affecting both asset and both liability then it can happen it will happen that no no vice versa things will happen if the asset is increasing then the liability will also increase it cannot happen that the liability will decrease and when the asset is decreasing the liability will also decrease so here it is not a vice versa case as in case of just assets so we can just make out and we can see the things which will help us in further chapters of journal entry that if any transaction is affecting only the assets 
then it has to be one increase and one decrease and if any transaction is affecting both asset and liability then it can be either both increase or either both decrease it cannot happen that the asset is increasing and the liability is decreasing it has to be both increase and both decrease now let us see some more examples these are some more cases of the concept of dual aspect explaining the concept of dual aspect let us see them also increases one liability and decreases other liability as i said in the previous slide that when any transaction is affecting only liabilities then it will increase one liability and decrease the other thing so if it is affecting just liabilities then it has to be one increase and one decrease as in case of assets as we have seen in the previous slide the first example the purchase of machinery in which the one asset was decreasing and one asset was increasing similarly liability one liability will increase then the other has to decrease a loan raised to pay the creditors suppose i am raising a loan from bank to pay my creditors from whom i have purchased my goods so what is happening a loan is being raised meaning we have to pay back to the bank at some later date so we are owing to them that is our liability to pay back to the bank at some later date so that is increasing our liability at one hand and on the other hand we are paying the creditors we are paying back them their money so now we don't have any liability towards them so one liability get gets cancelled so this is the thing increases one liability and decreases the other liability and the example is we are raising a loan to pay the creditors so the loan becomes our increase in liability and the decrease in creditor becomes a decrease in liability secondly increase the liability and increase in asset this also i have said in the previous slide that when there is both liability and asset involved then both will increase or decrease but only if assets and only liabilities are involved in any transaction that one then one side will increase and one side will decrease that is one asset will increase and one asset will increase one liability will increase and one liability will decrease just remember this thing this is very important that if any transaction is involving only liabilities then one liability will increase and one will decrease that is vice versa or in case of assets if any transaction is involving only assets then one asset will increase and the other will decrease the case will be vice versa but if the transactions are involving both assets and liabilities then there will be no vice versa there will be only increase and only decrease so if there is increase in liability then there will be a simultaneous increase in the asset also if there is a decrease in liability then there will be a simultaneous decrease in asset also just remember these concept very clearly now let's see the example of increase in liability and increase in asset a new machine is purchased for 50000 on credit cash is to be paid later on this we have seen in the previous slide increase in asset and increase in liability it is just given the opposite way increase in liability and increase in asset and number third is decrease in liability and decrease in asset this also we have done in the previous slide that when we repay the bank loan our liability is increasing and since we are paying in cash our asset is also decreasing so these are the examples of the concept of dual aspect that is accounting is a double entry process and any transaction will affect two accounts simultaneously thank you students hope the concepts of going concern historical cost and dual aspect are clear now and you will be able to solve the multiple choice questions in your exams related to these concepts in the next class we'll be doing some more concepts of accounting thank you